we've got something big today. So it's Fusion release day and a giant new feature has just come out called Configurations. I think Configurations is the biggest change to Fusion since we've started using it, since I've started using it back in 2015, and it's available for everybody. So let's get into it. When I first saw an early version of Configurations, my mind was just blown. I was immediately racing as to how I could use it. Configurations lets you save the state of your model so that you can easily come back to it, kind of like a bookmark with an easy drop down menu. You can configure your machining fixturing, more on that later, and many, many more options. So I think the best way to show you how it works is just to jump into some examples. The first one here is a Gridfinity generator that I've created. If you're not familiar with Gridfinity, it is grid-based bins and different tools that you can create off of a system. Put a link to it and you can download this. It's often 3D printed. I started working on this before configurations came out and now that configurations are out, I'm actually upgrading. When you open up Fusion and update it, you're going to see a couple new features. And up here, if you click configure, you're gonna get two different options. There's configure and then display configuration table. I typically just use configure most of the time. Quite a bit different if you just open this up and your file hasn't had any configurations yet. So I'll show you what that looks like. We open up a new file. It's gonna look more like this. And then you can end up creating configurations and each one of those would be a different menu option basically. So we go back to the Gridfinity file. I'll open up configurations and give you a little idea of how this works. So anything with these little check boxes means suppression or unsuppression. And those are really easy to set up if you wanted to suppress or unsuppress a feature in one of your options. So if you think of each row as a selection that you can make in your dropdown, which after you've configured, your dropdown is your menu of different configurations. So it actually shows you a little bit of a readout about what those things are if you hover over them too. The first one, all just changing features on this bin here. And the bins are obviously any size you want them to be. And that's part of what was so great about making this parametric in the first place. If I go and change parameters, and if you don't have a hotkey set for your parameters, shame on you, you should definitely do that. Uh, you do that by holding over this little thing and clicking change keyboard shortcut. I use W because my hand's always on W. W, open up my parameters and you can see all the parameters that are set up and starred for this file. I can change the grid size really easily. I can change the bin width and length. And those are kind of easy things and you could easily make a menu of just two by three bins versus two by two bins and make them taller or shorter. To me, that that's pretty easy enough to do from within the parameters table. There's other stuff that's kind of tedious to do, like if I don't want some of these features, how do I change those quickly? And so that's what I've chosen to make these configurations about. Kind of the default is the mag magnets plus the bin fillet, which is these magnets. And then this fillet on the inside just helps you get stuff out of them easier. So if I go to the second one, we get rid of the bin fillet and we keep the magnets. So then you can do a solid version, you know, and put a couple, I don't know, a couple tools or like a pen. And so all of this is just a template for a starting place. You get the picture. I'm just going through different options here, allow you to quickly change or select a bunch of things. And if you notice down here in the timeline, as I'm doing this, there's suppressing or unsuppressing, depending on what I've set up in the configuration. To dig into that a little bit deeper, the way you add something to this table is just hovering over this little new option called add aspects within the configuration table. If I click that, I then can go and find any feature I want in this timeline. So let's say we'll do this fillet here. If I left click on it, I then get all the options that I can configure about that item. Let's say I want to suppress, since we've been talking about suppression, this fillet. If I choose that, it's going to add it as another column on my configurations table. And now each one of these rows can have a different version of that fillet, which is this little top fillet on the part. So if I push okay here, I can then, we're, we're currently set on no features. So I can actually suppress that if there's no features here, but just by clicking on this little button here, you can see the change happening. And that actually happens in the timeline too. Suppressions are probably one of the most used features of configuration toggling as I've used it so far. I'm sure I'll come to use a lot more features 
anything you can figure here. So we can easily add, you know, an aspect that is, if I left click here, changing the quantity or the distance of this linear rectangular pattern. So each one of those could be configured uniquely for each menu item. You might be wondering what's going on down below here. These are called themes and themes allow you to basically have like way more sub selections within one column. So I've got a theme for magnets and I got a theme for solid. And these don't have many options, but they do allow me to quickly choose on each row. So for the magnets, I can then, you know, have a, another sub selection. I think it's probably best if we jump over to this cabinet configurator and I can show you more of those options. This is just a, a plywood cabinet box that is something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. There's a couple other people that were trying to do something similar to this. And we now have all the features to do it, especially with if then. What I've done with this one, added a bunch of features so that I can quickly generate different versions of a cabinet that I like. They're all base cabinets, so we can go from a, a left or right door. You can see the door and the hinges in the background here are changing from side to side. And nothing is going wrong with the timeline. When I did this before, the timeline would be disastrous. We can also have different amounts of drawers and no hinges or, you know, none at all and just kind of start on around. Makes me very happy that I now have this option. So let me show you what's going on on the back end of the configurations. You can see the theme that I've created here for door, which is a, something that, that needs a lot of suppressions depending on which option is chosen. So we have drawers, we don't need any of the hinge stuff. So those are all suppressed. If we're choosing a left or a right door, then the suppression would need to be turned on or off for the left or the right side. So you can see here, we've got a handle, a pole on the left, along with what's going on, the hinge clips that need to be there too. If we switch to the right, you can see the timelines toggling on and off, basically just different versions of a left or right extrusion. And those extrusions are just, just what you'd expect. They're nothing fancy here, but in the past, if you didn't want to extrude something based on a parameter state, it would often break your model and just not work anymore. So this is a huge leap forward in that it's basically self-healing in a new way. So to create a theme, it's really quite easy. I would just right click at the top of a column and move it to a new theme table. So now I've got all these different options and you can continue to add different features this theme now so this theme i don't know what this theme would be it's completely nonsensical but might crash fusion but no it's, it's fine so we can continue to add themes as well as theme rows under each of these things until you're fully confused and don't know what's happening anymore so let's jump into the last example here i mentioned fixture and i think this is going to be a huge aspect of how i use configurations it's a ling bias turned it into a parametric configured model in the past being able to change some of these features was just frankly really annoying or you had to have multiple versions of the model. If you're interested, I made an entire separate video of taking this download and turning it into a parametric configured model, actually this model that we're looking at right now. So go look for that in the description and you can actually get this vice model too. So anyway, the way that this works, one thing that you can do with these vices is flip the jaws from inside the outside. These two jaws, based on a couple suppressions here, we can actually just do that with a click now. So I can switch those from outside to inside. I've got a parameter that drives the jaw when it's an inside configuration versus an outside. If you wanted those to be the same, it'd be really easy to change. You could just link these together. This is just a really good starting place. And this is so amazing. When you jump into manufacturing, you actually can choose the configuration you want to put into each setup as well. So, so as you can imagine, this configuration affects every aspect of Fusion. And once again, you don't have to use it. You can just ignore that it's there, but you're going to run into it as more people start to use it. Let's do an insert drive. So I typed S on the keyboard, and I'm going to type insert. The cabinet configurator file. Now you have an option to see what those configured options are when you do a go to insert them. So once I've chosen the configuration, then I can choose the objects I want to actually configure. So I can choose the whole thing if I want, or just pieces of it. And it's gonna pull that into my K 
configure me bro file. So there's that. Let's do one more drive. I'm going to search this one. We're going to pick this configuration. So first you're choosing the configuration. And now we get to choose the objects we want. So I want both these items. So it's dropped them in. I think it's hidden by our cabinet. So now we've got those items configured in. We can then configure these items inside of this file. So you can get into what I would consider configuration inception, which is a little bit tricky and probably very confusing. I haven't done this yet, but I have seen some examples that you can imagine gets real tricky. I hope that was helpful, and I hope you're as excited about configurations as I am. Probably not. If you want to get the Langvice or our Gridfinity files, check out the link in the description and you can get those. Thanks.